Hey there guys, what's going on here? It's John from JTB Reviews here and today we're going to keep rolling with the Slayer reviews. So this time we're going to be doing Divine Intervention. Um, Divine Intervention to me is is a great album. Overall, when this came out, it, it was it was a great record. It, it, it was just awesome because at the time you had, you know, the whole grunge era coming out. You know, a lot of people were doing the grunge thing 1994 and, you know, it, it, you you were thinking like was Slayer gonna go towards the grunge or were they gonna not be as heavy? How is this going to play out, especially with a different drummer? Because this is a record where you know Dave Lombardo is out of the picture. He left. Now they have Paul Bostav, which, as we come to know in recent times, you know came back to the band with open arms and just crushed it. Um, but, uh, here, yeah, they we're introduced to, you know, Paul's new drumming style, you know, a whole different type of, uh, you know, sound to it almost because Paul and, and Dave Lombardo are two different drummers. They're both great in their own rights, but they're, they're different. 1994, this record comes out, you know, a lot of people say about the production on this one, you know, Tom, apparently he liked the production, and apparently, you know, I, I think Kerry King said, it, you know, it could have it could have been a lot better, you know, but, you know, still, you know, Rick Rubin still producing Slayer, which is pretty sick. Um, you know, Rick Rubin definitely gets a lot of cool, you know, stuff. You know, he gets a lot of cool points for doing this one. Uh, let me talk about the, the tracks here. So. What we're going to get out of this record from Slayer is a little different. It's it's that they they kind of changed their sound from Seasons to the Abyss and then on this one. This one Divine Intervention has, you know, they they kind of have a variety of songs like 213 is kind of creepy and slow. You know, it's kind of got that Season of Abyss, you know, type slow songs, you know, kind of spill the blood type um and this one's got a lot more like serial killers um, you know, it, it's got some like voice recordings and, and quotes from serial killers, which is pretty cool. You know, it's cool to me. Um, but yeah, let, let's talk about this one. So killing fields right out the gate, doof, doof, just drum roll, just, just killing it. Um, they just, they, they come out swinging, definitely a highlight of the record, just immediately. Um, sex, murder, art, just, you know, dun, 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 dun. you know, it's just so just iconic. It's just good. These, these riffs are, are going to be ones that are just, they're, they're really rhythm -y. Ah, I don't even know if that's a word, but they, they have a lot of rhythm to it and they're kind of like, they're just really good. They're, they're, they're riffs you're not going to ever forget ever. You're, you're just not going to forget them. Ditto head, pretty good. Fictional reality. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right, so my my favorite tracks on here. I'm just gonna skip going through the whole whole track bit because the whole the whole album is good. There's not one really bad song on here. There's not. Um, so all right, my my favorite songs on here is definitely gonna be Circle of Beliefs, Killing Fields, Two One Three. I'm just gonna throw another one in there. I I really like I really like Ditto Head a lot. I I really thought that one was was really good. Um, but seriously. When it all comes down to it, all ten of these tracks are like amazing. There's not one bad song on here. What what people usually criticize this record on is, you know, they they criticize the the production. A lot of people kind of criticize the, uh, you know, like Dave Lombardo's not in it, so we're not going to listen to it. I don't know why you're you're missing out because it's still a great record. There's still Hanneman, King, and Tom. Like it's so good. But I totally understand you. Like, if you're a Dave Lombardo fan, I, I totally, totally get it. But you got to give Paul, man, some credit, too. He he killed it just as well. And, uh, you know, I I really thought it was good. I really did. Um, whew. But other than that, I don't really have anything else to say about this one. It's It's really good. It sold a lot of copies when it came out. And, you know, then again, you got to think. Grunge was out. A lot of people really weren't jamming metal when grunge was out. It was all about grunge, and that's the big thing. But people really weren't digging death metal and, and heavy metal back then. They just weren't. The only bands that really stood out was, you know, the iconic ones. But uh, Slayer and metal stayed alive, and uh, we're happy to have them. 
You want me to put a rating on this one? Well, here's your go. Here, here's your here's your rating. All right, your rating is gonna be a good. I, I believe this one deserves a nine out of ten. I, I I strongly believe it deserves a nine out of ten. You know, you're gonna ask me why. Here's why. I I do think they kind of rushed this record just a little bit. You know, the production isn't the best. You know, but still, it, it's still decent. It's still good. I think the writing was really good on here the songwriting was immaculate so that's why it gets such a, a high grade on here that's why it's getting a nine but yeah definitely production issues for sure on this one and you know it's it's not a rain of blood it's just not but uh it's still a great record regardless so definitely go and check it out and uh you know let me know what you guys think of it and do you like the album art i definitely dig the album art and I definitely dig the cover. It's so dope. It's so dope. So, alright guys. Well, thank you for watching. That's my review for Divine Intervention. And uh, let me know what you guys think about the record. Or, or did you guys like it? Did you guys not like it? Let me know what you think. So, alright. Bye.